Good morning, dear hearts. We are on lesson 47. Please subscribe. Uh, we are on the last of our God is lessons for quite some time. There will be some much, much, much later in the year. But for now, God is the strength in which I trust. We had lesson 42, God is my strength, vision is his gift. So that was my strength, but God is the strength. God is the strength in which I trust. Trust is a very important concept and part of the foundation of any teacher of God because there's a wonderful quote in the course that says, trust would settle every problem now. That is how important trust is. Now the beginning of this lesson starts with what I have in the past called a zinger and there are many of them throughout both the text and the workbook. You know these little one-liners almost that just like get to you but really get your attention and this is one of those sentences that really gets your attention. It says if you are trusting in your own strength you have every reason to be apprehensive, anxious, and fearful. Well, really? In my own strength? Yeah, because then it says, what can you predict or control? Well, that answer, of course, is nothing. So if I'm trusting in my own strength to be able to predict or control any situation, well, I'm going to be apprehensive, anxious, and fearful about the outcome. The lesson continues, what is there in you that can be counted on? What would, you give, what would give you the ability to be aware of all the facets of any problem and to resolve them in such a way, this is important, that only good can come of it? Think about that. The answer to every problem is one that no one suffers. Only good comes out of the solution. Am I able to do that? No. What is there in you that gives you the recognition of the right solution and guarantee that it will be accomplished? That only good will come of it, that there will be no feelings of failure or loss. No one will be angry the situation will resolve itself in such a way that everyone feels that it was equitable, that it was fair. If I'm trusting in my own strength to do that, then I am apprehensive, anxious, and fearful. But there is one, there is one who can do this for us. And it says of yourself, you can do none of these. To believe that you can is to put your trust where trust is unwarranted and to justify fear, anxiety, depression, anger, and sorrow. Who can put his faith in weakness and feel safe? Yet who can put his faith in strength and feel weak? If I put my strength in God, I will not feel weak. I will feel lifted up. I will have no fear surrounding this situation because I will know that it is going to come to a completion, a conclusion in which I feel safe. And that's the big thing. If I am trusting in strength, if I am strong, then I feel safe. I feel protected. I don't feel that I am about to be attacked. What is real strength? Real strength comes from within. It has nothing to do with how many repetitions I do at the gym or how many miles I walk or how fast or how much I can lift. That has nothing to do. That's physical strength. But we're speaking of inner strength. God is the inner strength in which I trust that he is always there for me. God is your safety in every circumstance. His voice speaks for him in all situations and in every aspect of all situations, telling you exactly what to do to call upon his strength and his protection, his voice. This is the Holy Spirit, it is the voice for God. And there are no exceptions to what the Holy Spirit is going to tell us and to guide us. There are no exceptions because God has no exceptions. And the voice which speaks for him thinks as he does. 
the voice that speaks for God will guide us as God would guide us into the perfect outcome in any situation. Now today, we're going to the practicing. The practicing, we're up to 20 minutes now, four times a day, 20 minutes each, but then very frequently to do these rep these repetitions, not with how many how much weight, but the repetitions for your mind, because we are building, as Marianne Williamson would call it, the spiritual muscle. So for that, we need many repetitions. And we try to reach past our own weaknesses, it tells us, to the source of our real strength. We want to go down into where real strength abides for us, and that is within God. God is the strength. Um, and close your eyes to begin as usual. Repeat the idea. Spend a minute or two searching for situations in your life in which you have invested with fear and dismissing each one by telling yourself, God is the strength in which I trust. In this situation, God is the strength in which I trust. And then so slip past your concerns about your own sense of inadequacy. Yes, there's another zinger. It's obvious that any situation that causes you concern is associated with feelings of inadequacy. I can't manage this. I can't handle this situation. But again, there is one who can and will for me, and it is the voice for God. And so it tells us, you know, it's the recognition of our frailty is a necessary step in the correction of our errors. As I've said many times before, we cannot make any corrections without the awareness of the problem. I have to be able to see it, to become aware of what is wrong, so now I can have it corrected. I can give it up. I can let it go so that it can go to where it needs to be to be resolved. Um, it says you must gain an awareness that confidence in your real strength is fully justified. Confidence in the real strength that I have with God. And then it says in the later parts of this practicing, we want to reach down into the mind to a place of real safety. Real safety is in God's strength. Nothing will come to harm us. You know, real strength is when we stay in peace when there is absolutely no evidence that that is a wise decision. And yet we find strength in the peace because it is being held for us by God. The last, in the last, oh, next to the last paragraph, paragraph seven, and I like this line a lot. There is a place in you where there is perfect peace. There is a place in you where nothing is impossible. There is a place in you where the strength of God abides. It reminds me of in lesson 41, that God goes with me wherever I go, but it, there also is a, 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 a sentence, a few sentences there, part of a paragraph that reflect also this idea, the place within with a perfect peace. And it says, deep within you is everything that is perfect, ready to radiate through you and out into the world. It will cure all sorrow and pain and fear and loss because it will heal the mind that thought these things were real and suffered out of its allegiance to them. There is strength within us. There's a place in us with that real peace. And we can go there today. That is where God abides. That is where God's strength is. And we can tap into that source Throughout the, uh, the course, in many ways, in many places, it says, uh, who walks with you? And I just want to um, change that for the moment as, who is by my side? As I'm going through this world, and if I, I think that something is amiss and I'm afraid, I can say, who is by my side? And go now actually to, in the course, where it says, if you knew who walks beside you in the path that you have chosen, fear would be impossible. God is my strength. God is my strength in which I trust. And I trust that there's, he is always there beside me. Um, that's it for today. I hope it helped. Please like, please share, please subscribe, please comment. Please pray for this recognition of our inner strength 
together with God's strength, we are invulnerable. There is nothing we cannot do. We can accomplish everything that we choose to. Um, so like, share, subscribe, comment, pray. Please be here tomorrow like the last, next lesson. Namaste.